So it's Friday. It is, according to my watch, 21 June. Does that mean it is uh, summer solstice? Spring? Hey, Google, when is summer solstice? Friday, June 21st, 2019. Haha. Happy summer solstice, everyone. I guess I should be swinging about the maypole, worshipping pagan love gods, uh, fertility goddesses, and so forth. Or at least I recommend that you go out and make sweet, sweet love to someone tonight. Or at least be fertile. Or at least be love. And pursue your pagan happiness in this pagan world of ours um, and enjoy the alignment of the stars and the movement of celestial bodies throughout the wilderness known as space. Welcome, this is Chris Abraham of Chris Cast. This is episode six. I think that today's episode is just going to be a ramble, as they say on YouTube. Me and all the other ASMR girls are uh, really into talking about stuff that's going on in our lives. Um, or I could say... The ASML, the ASMR girls and I. So I and the ASMA, ASMR girls. Um, episode six: Bad Grammar by Chris Abraham. Other than that, I'm still on this uh, one meal a day fast, and I love it. Except yesterday, I'm going to give me a gimme or... I, I mean, I, I... I... I was accountable for it. But I was watching TV. I was watching YouTube and I saw people eating Asian food with chopsticks. And I looked over from my TV to a cup, a mug full of disposable balsa, disposable chopsticks, and I said to myself, you know, I'm doing this one meal a day thing, and I want to eat something with chopsticks, and I want them to be noodles, but if I were just to make saimin or ramen, that wouldn't have the kind of holistic fats that I need in order to make a one meal a day meal work, so... I decided that I was going to make something that combined meat and dairy and cheese and cream. And so that sounded like an Alfredo with ham lunch meat chopped up in it. Then I decided that I was going to make angel hair pasta al dente. And then so once 10 o'clock came around in the morning went down to the convenience store and got some ragu, roasted garlic, sort of Alfredo sauce, a box of angel hair pasta, the most boring story ever, and a box of uh, honey ham luncheon meat. Came upstairs, busted out my flamey, flamey, orange, red, hot, Le Crusette, set, boiled some water with appropriate, with appropriate salt content. They say that your pasta water should be as salty as the sea. I think a pinch don't do it. Bur burled that up. But while I was doing that, I took my, uh, my chef's knife, chopped the bejesus out of that ham, dumped the entire contents of the glass bottle into another Le Crusette pot, bright orange, fire orange red, and heated that up. 
and then proceeded to add sriracha and cayenne and chili and paprika and black ground pepper and mix that together with the understanding that I realized it was going to be too hot to enjoy. And once the water started burling, I threw in um, the entire box of pasta in and let it uh, let it burl for for uh, four minutes. I said, "Hey Alexa, set an alarm for four minutes." Four minutes starting now. And she said, four minutes starting now." And then after four minutes passed, I drained the the water from the burl and uh, converted them into a lump into the uh, pot where the water was, where the water was and combined them, heated them up put them into a shiny mixing bowl denuded, unwrapped a pair of chopsticks from its paper sheath And then glommed that SOB down, put the rest, the remaining amounts, after logging into MyFitnessPal and stopping my Vora and Zero Android apps, put them back into fasting mode. I put uh, the remaining two, uh, two mason jars full of pasta away into the fridge. Now that would have been perfect, right? Except around 5 or 6 p.m. I got hungry. I got mighty hungry. And because there was food in the house, I went ahead and eat down two of those mason jars filled with cold pasta which is like not so much <clears throat> the plan was for the next day to reconstitute those two things of pasta with another jar of some sort of sauce and maybe some cubed spam or some more ham because they were just I had uh, single handedly delivered myself most of the good ham and most of the good sauce into my gullet the day before. So when I ate the cold pasta, or I, I actually pronounce it pasta, I'm just being eccentric. It's kind of dry, kind of cold, kind of unfulfilling. Still too hot to enjoy spice-wise, but um, that might have been because I squeezed copious amounts of sriracha sauce into um, each mason jar before I glommed it down. <coughs> Pardon me. This required me to then stop both of my fasting apps and uh, re-adjust them to almost 6 p.m. So that when I I broke fast again today at like 11-something or 12-something, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 10, I uh, had only had, I guess, 20 hours fasting. Twenty minutes later, after that, oh, and then I had a, um, I had a chicken burrito with everything on it on a uh, habanero, red habanero, wheat um, tortilla with everything, including peach and I don't know, but including sour cream and cheese and beans and uh, half and half beans. Um, which are black beans and pinto beans and guacamole and stuff. But last night, man, last night, I knew that not only the Porsche control yesterday, which ultimately included eating an entire, over the course of those two meals, eating an entire box, not an industrial box, like the kind you see at a convenience store, a, um, a box of um, honey ham, an entire bottle. Alexa, stop. Thank you. 
uh, an entire bottle of uh, Alfredo sauce and an entire box of angel pasta, angel hair pasta. When I woke up in the middle of the night, I was in physical duress. And I wasn't sure whether I was going to die or whether I was just suffering from one of the following. And I look forward to your comments, first of all, to see whether or not you made it this far. But secondly, was it A, gluten? You know, like I'm not used to eating that much gluten. Was it the wheat? Was it a wheat allergy? Was it portion control? Was it sodium? Was it dairy? Was it carbs? Or was it eating too late? Or was it all the above? Or was it none of the above? Please let me know. So, but anyway, I slept an incredibly long amount of time. I, I ended up sleeping according to my Fitbit, which is really funny and fickle about this whole, this whole living on my arm. I slept over 10 hours and 11 minutes, which means that I had been in bed for a super long time. I think I went to sleep, oh, I'm not even gonna tell you, so early. One thing though, one thing I do think that's positive about this um, one meal a day, which is better served with one burrito today, which is what I had today. A burrito seems to sustain me for an entire 23 hours. I had it with, um, with Hugo, Hugo de Coco or Hugo de Coco. Is it Hugo or Hugo? Hugo de, it's Hugo, Hugo. Hugo de Coco. Anyway, coconut juice, the kind in the big tall can with the green stripes, the white can, green stripes, tall, and with the little flecks of new baby coconut at the bottom. So delicious. My favorite thing. Probably amazingly sugar filled, but at the end of the day, uh, I'm hoping for miraculous things to happen because of this uh, because of this fasting. Here's things that I've already discovered. Numero uno, I have uh, less joint pain. I think that this strange balance of all the ingredients in an everything burrito from Burrito Bros results in the fuel enough to maintain my hunger pangs for uh, an entire 23 hours and 45 minutes, if I'm honest, and the next day, and the result of the 23 hours and 45 minutes of night eating results in a lack of inflammation, and it results in, over the course of that 23 hours and 45 minutes, in general, a lower resting pulse, which I believe is healthier for my system. And I believe that it, it takes it takes strain off of my heart in general, something that I need to do because, um, because I am fighting chronic heart disease that isn't necessarily chronic, nor is it heart disease, but I had an event a few years ago that made me feel an extreme sense of mortality. I'll talk about that later. I wish it was a more interesting story, but I'll tell you about my three minutes of death soon. I'll also tell you about the fact that I believed that at some point while dating Michelle Nolan, or even, I think it was dating Michelle Nolan, or Maybe it was even Stephanie Austin. I believe that I died for three minutes because of a... Was it, was it my... Was it my ACL work? Did I... Anyway, I don't think it actually happened, but in my head I remember it, so maybe it was a previous life. And honestly, the, the years that I dated uh, 
Stephanie Austin and the years that I dated Michelle Nolan do feel like separate, different Chris's. I would say uh, six-year-old, uh, zero to six-year-old Chris is version one, uh, six-year-old Chris to, um, to eighth grade Chris is version two. Uh, version three is ninth grade Chris, uh, I would say through to, uh, 20, 20 year old Chris. Uh, then I would say the next version is 21 year old Chris, 20, 20, 21 year old Chris, uh, to my dad's death, which is 25 year old Chris. I'd say the next one is 25 year old Chris. Uh, to 33-year-old Chris, or 32-year-old Chris. 32-year-old Chris until, uh, I would say 32-year-old Chris until uh, 42-year-old Chris. That's a long one. That's, uh, and then when my mom died and when I was 42, that is the current Chris that I'm in right now. That's, uh, I don't remember what version that is. I think it's immaterial, but if I were to break down my life, I would say that's that one. Um, so yeah, the, uh, you know what? My entire life is parenthetical. So please excuse the side notes, sidebars and shaggy dog stories. And by please forgive. And by sorry, I don't mean either of those. Uh, please indulge me is what I generally mean when I'm saying I'm sorry. Please indulge me is the translation for that. Um, except when I say mea maxima culpa, in which case I really do mean I'm sorry. So inflammation has, uh, has decreased, which means my knees are much happier. Um, That could be the the aspirin that the doctor asked me to take every morning. Uh, it's a it's a full dose aspirin. It's not a baby aspirin, but my doctor wants me to take a regular aspirin every morning. That might be the magic thing. Is aspirin anti-inflammatory? Is the question. But I believe since I've started this diet, I don't have any morning aches and pains that I have to uh, then stretch and and active out of. Um, so which makes me happy, uh, because the warrior diet or the one meal a day diet requires that outside of the eating 15 minutes to an hour a day, I do not consume anything but, uh, water, I guess black tea and coffee. I don't drink black tea, but I think I might start making, uh, I think I might start making, um, iced tea to drink with no sweetener in it and just drink that. I think I might do that. Anyway, uh, because, because that, because I, I cannot have anything except black coffee and water in the 23 hours and 45 minutes outside of the eating window. <coughs> I also, um, don't drink anything. Um, haven't had wine in a week, haven't had, uh, whiskey, vodka, gin. I haven't had any, any, any type of, of, uh, licorice liqueurs, no ouzo, uh, no ricard, no kir, no kir royal, uh, mais non, pas du vin, pas du vin rouge, pas du vin blanc, alors... And so none of those things. Uh, if I wanted to drink a glass of wine, it would have to be in the hour during which I have my one meal a day, which is why I think Sunday I am going to keep on fasting until night. And then I think I'm going to go to um, my favorite dive, L.A. bar, and I'm going to have um, a burger uh, with everything. I'm going to have fries. I'm going to have a a couple glasses of wine or a whiskey or something like that. 
Nobody says I don't have to. So any, uh, or nobody says I can't. Probably won't though. Tomorrow at 12 or one o'clock, I'm gonna be bicycling down to a Capitol Hill because there's one, my favorite, I mean, I love Burrito Bros and I love Chipotle uh, and I love um, every single burrito place in the mission in San Fran. And I'm sure there's a million amazing burrito places around the world. Um, including Mexico, a country I love. I met nicer piece, people in Mexico than I have in this country, that's for sure. Anyway, I am going to Bicyclette, Farad. I'm going to take my pedal bike and I'm going to uh, bicycle over to the original, the first and maybe the last Burrito Brothers which uh, used to be my favorite burrito place in the world and I hope they still make the large that comes with shredded chicken and that you can get with um, with spinach that's the one thing the one negative thing about Burrito Brothers I mean about Burrito Bros and about Chipotle is that uh, neither of them have any uh, any any spinach? So I'm gonna get rice. I'm gonna get. Uh, they have a refried bean, a refried pinto bean. I'm gonna get everything else, but I'm gonna want the shredded chicken, and I want the steamed uh, steamed spinach. And I completely forget what kind of salsa, etc., that they have, but I definitely look forward to that tomorrow. And then on Sunday, probably just gonna have, I know that Burrito Bros is closed. Um, maybe if I make it a long walk slash run, I might go crazy down at Whole Foods or a Whole Foods, depending on where. Uh, wherever I end up, I'll go to the Courthouse Whole Foods or the Crystal City Whole Foods or the DuPont Circle Whole Foods or Capitol Hill Whole Foods or something and I'll just load up one of those folding cardboard prepared food containers up with some yummy vittles covering both fatty meats and yummy veggies and then I'll go to town on that add to that some sort of trendy awesome fizzy water and consider that my one meal a day uh, why not punch a giant belly bomb in the middle of, the, of an athletic day, huh? So after that, I might just hail a number 16 Columbia Pike bus here at uh, Arlington Arlington Trans, Transit. It's called the Art Buses, or I might take a metro, le metro, to Pentagon, and then a 16 or... Or something like that. I think tomorrow's going to be a day out for me. Me and my... uh, Me and my... uh, Camelback bag. And my bright orange, safety orange, fading safety orange. Hill People Gear Original 2 kit bag on my crazy, crazy chest. Um, With a charger and everything else. I might even stop by the Potomac Boathouse tomorrow. I promise on Monday I'm going to start going there and working from there. Um, need to get out of the apartment. Need to, to get good work days in. Last couple days, uh, I've been stressed out recently, so I've taken the last couple days as forced rest. Made sure I've gotten plenty of sleep. Making sure I don't check email compulsively and that sort of thing. Uh, One might say that these Chris Casts are talking therapy where the therapist is you and since therapy is about talking and expressing and so forth, it isn't really about having the therapist telling me what to do. That's perfect because in any sense of of the term, in any sense of the interpretation, You can't tell me what to do, at least not immediately. And by the time 
you comment, which is something I'd love you to do, or leave me voicemails, which is also something I'd love you to do. Uh, until then, it's as if I'm talking to myself or as happens in my favorite, favorite movie uh, of all time, Shirley Valentine, it's sort of like me talking to the wall. Maybe I should start, hey wall, how are you doing wall? Nice to talk to you today, wall. And then you'll think I'm completely bonkers, or as they say in Shirley Valentine, around the freaking bend, you all. Around the freaking bend, you all. Go blow me, governor. I can't do a faithful reproduction of the northerner, the northerner accent that they have there in the Shirley Valentine. Oh, God, I just killed some of you with that terrible one. Yay! Okay, 25 minutes, 14, 15, 16 seconds. I'm going to add... <coughs> <coughs> I have a nasal drip allergy problem, so please excuse me. If you have advice for nasal drip and a chronic coffee thing, uh, some phlegmy down the throat thing, please let me know in the comments or in a voicemail or something like that. I can't wait to learn. Can't wait to... Uh, and drink more water. It's hot outside. And love thy neighbor as yourself. And God is in the faces of those around you. And be kind for everyone you meet is fighting a hard battle. And hugs not horns. <clears throat> and if you want to email me, you can email me at chris at abraham.su. If you want to learn more about me, you can go to abraham.su or chrisabraham.com. I have a channel on YouTube. That would be youtube.com slash chrisabraham. I have uh, Twitter, at chrisabraham, Facebook, at chrisabraham. Um, I believe my Pinterest, I think my Pinterest is, uh, is frozen. I need to, Pinterest is frozen. I don't really do Snapchat. Oh, Instagram is at Chris Abraham. Uh, Strava, you can meet me there. Uh, and I, I support a, uh, a website that's dedicated to biking, running, shuffling, jogging, um, yoging, and kettlebell swinging called Runner. And that's rnnr.us, rnnr.us. <clears throat> and I uh, run a little company. We do influencer marketing and social media marketing and um, consulting and SEO and online reputation management. And that's called Garris Corp. And it's G-E-R-R dot I-S. You can also reach me at Chris at... G-E-R-R-I-S-C-O-R-P dot com Chris at G-E-R-R dot I-S And that's it for now uh, Mahalo, Nui Loa Merci beaucoup Donc Yvel Donc Guzer uh, Auf Wiedersehen um, And uh, Ciao for now You have fun and do something amazing.